Good morning and win today, Saints. Uh, it is a great day. It is a new day. The Lord has given us. Please subscribe to our channel, share, like, and click the notification bell so that the next time we are sharing a message, you will receive. Feel free also to comment, suggest, so that me and you can grow together in the Lord. For I am a child of God, you are also a child of God. In this world, none is righteous, not even one. We are doing our best every day so that we may please our maker. The question, is it easy to enter God's kingdom? That's our topic today. Right, let us read the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Then we shall also go to 21 and 23. Flow with me, I'll be giving scriptures. Right, I will read it. Matthew chapter 7, from verse 13 to 14. Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. So this road that leads to destruction, there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. 21, Matthew chapter 7 from verse 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. This is the Lord's teaching. Not the disciples' teaching. This is the Lord's teaching. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who was crucified for our sake. Who bought us with his precious blood. So now these are the conditions for us to enter the kingdom of heaven. It is not easy, child of God, to enter heaven. You have to make some sacrifices. There are things that you have to let go. They will disturb you. They will distract you. And they are part of Satan's agenda to destroy you. It is part of Satan's trick to make you not enter heaven. This is why the Lord is saying, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter. So, which means we are many there. We may tell ourselves that we are entering, but check. What are the conditions that the Lord spoke about? When God says, me, I didn't know you, you worker of iniquity, you who practice lawlessness. This is what the Lord is saying. I never knew you depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So, which means we have Christians who practice lawlessness. I might be one of them, you might be one of them. So we need to consider our ways and change and do the right thing. Hallelujah. Let us read Exodus 20. I love it. I read it. Let us read Exodus 20. I believe every child of God knows Exodus 20. This is where we find the Ten Commandments. Right. But I would like us to say to start with 2, then go to 13, 14, 15, 16, the verses. The rest, when you have time, please go to it, read Exodus 20. You also read other scriptures that I'm going to give at the end. Exodus 20, from verse 2. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. 3. 
You shall have no other gods before me. Right. This is the Lord. He is reminding, he is telling the children of Israel to say, Now that you have left Pharaoh, for you to live according to my ways and according to my standard, first you shall not have any other God but me. This is what God wants. For you to worship God, you must not be focused on many things. You have to focus on God so that the enemy will not distract you, so that the enemy will not steal you. Right. For a good measure, let us also go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I will try to be quick because of time. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Finally, then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you received from us. How you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. Hallelujah. Let us read also Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Child of God, the message is, is it easy to enter God's kingdom? Right. We read Matthew chapter 7 from verse 13 and 14 and 21 to 23. Right. Here is a question once again. Is it easy to enter God's kingdom? There are a lot of sacrifices to be made. There are a lot of no's, no to this, no to that, no to this, no to that, that you are supposed to agree with the Lord Jesus Christ. If we are not careful, it will be better for you that you did not go to church. It will be better for you that you just enjoyed what is happening in the world than deceiving yourself, saying you're worshipping God. Because God is clean. He wants us to be pure. He doesn't want us to mix with the worldly things. Today as Christians, we are trapped. It's like as Christians, I see we, we have become also people of the world. There is no difference now between a child of God and somebody of the world who don't believe in God. What I desire as a Christian is what a sinner is also desiring. We are no longer desiring the righteousness of God. This is why God is saying in the book of Matthew here to say, Enter by the narrow gate, for it is only a few people. That is Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. So there are many of us Christians who go in by this gate. That is very wide. It is wide opened, and we are many walking in it. But Christ is saying, this is the Lord Jesus Christ whom we worship, giving a warning, because Jesus knew what was going to happen. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. Child of God, it is not easy to enter heaven. There are sacrifices. There are a lot of things that we need to choose. There are a lot of things that we need to say no to as long as we are in this world. It is not easy, child of God, to enter heaven. We need to be ready. We need to be prepared. As preachers of the gospel are teaching the gospel every day, child of God, the riches that we are chasing, we cannot save God and mammon. Right. When you love money, it's a trap. Let us remember even this, this the, the, the rich young ruler, right? Matthew, Matthew chapter 19 from verse uh, 22, I guess. Matthew chapter 19, from verse 16, right? 
Matthew chapter 19 from verse 16 to 22 for a good measure. Just visit that scripture. The young man came to Jesus and said, Lord Jesus, I have done everything. I honor my father and my mother. I respect them. Then Jesus said, sell everything that you have and give to the poor. That is a message of love. Which means even though the young man had done everything, he was wealthy, but he lacked love. And because of that, the Bible says he went away sad because he thought maybe Jesus would clap hands for him and say, wow, well done. Once again, child of God, there are a lot of preparations that we need to do for us to enter the kingdom of God. This world has brought to us a lot of destruction. Many of us we will cry on the last day. It will not be easy. Many of us are going to cry, are going to shed tears. We're going to regret. We're going to blame ourselves. Let us be careful of what we like. Let us be careful of what we love most. Is it in the will of God? We desire to enter our destiny. We desire to enter heaven. But what 